Hi everybody, this is Kotor Bay in Montenegro and this is today's review protagonist uh, 2006 Mini 1 R52 convertible This car was designed by Frank Stephenson, an American designer. To make this car recognizable, he used round headlights and characteristic radiator grille. But also he used almost vertical windshield and straight waistband, characteristic features of Winnie silhouettes. Frank Stephenson worked for outstanding car manufacturers like Lancia, Maserati, Ferrari, BMW and McLaren. He created Ferrari F440 and McLaren P1, but the most known of his creators are two small giant historical cars, the Fiat 500 Cinquecento and first edition of Mini, renewed with BMW brand. This car pleases due to its roof transformation. When you are riding in a convertible, you risk exposing too much to the sun, your neck, your arms and even your ears. This car allows you to make a sunroof by opening the front part of its folding roof, that makes a kind of beach umbrella. And also it looks like a lovely tiny army jeep vehicle. In 25 seconds this roof can be folded to make a real convertible. The groovy interior of this Mini is inspired by classic 60s Mini. We have a big dial that looks like a grand mass album clock and separate rev counter on the steering column. Thanks to this dashboard layout, driving this car is felt like driving a motorcycle, especially when its roof is down. This old interior is squeaky and noisy, but the finishing is great. The upper part of the dashboard is made of soft plastic, and it looks very nice, like an old Jaguar car. Everything is unusual in this interior. There are helicopter switches to operate windows and other functions. Climate buttons layout is in mini logo shape and this big grand mass alarm clock with speedometer dial and other indicators is very spectacular. This car have a 2006 model steering wheel, very comfortable to handle thanks to its thick profile. There is only one single indicator for direction lights for both left and right turns. The seats are very comfortable. I'm about 5 feet and 10 inches tall and rather XXL size and I could find a good driving position to operate manual gearbox, although the seat's adjustments are at their maximum. Let's have a glance under the hood. The handle of the right side it seems to be characteristic of an English right-handed cars. The front part is one single piece. There are no fenders, but motor compartment is protected with big mud flaps. There is 1.6 liter 16 valve Chrysler engine of 90 horsepower under the hood. Mini Cooper version has the same motor with power increased to 115 horsepower. And the Cooper S version has the same cylinder block with supercharger and air intake instead of the battery here. Some funny details about the rear part of the car. In my kitchen I used to run an old Whirlpool brand microwave oven. Its door opens downwards. Here the things happen very likely. Sure you can heat up your pizza inside 
but this trunk can accept two backpacks and a big camera box. If your girlfriend weight is up to 80 kilos, you can have a picnic with her on the roadside. She will sit on this door and you will have to stand alone or walk around. And if it happens you were a three-year-old child and you were kidnapped, you've got this handle to be able to open the trunk from the inside and to escape. This specific car has 17 inches rims from Cooper S, painted in white color and 205 mm width tires. It looks just great, it steers very well, but it's a little bit shaky to ride. This car is tiny, it has a very short hood, but it pretends to be a very serious car to drive. Firstly thanks to interior materials, but mostly thanks to its driving abilities. It's really cozy inside, with black foldable roof and black pillars. There is enough space up front from drivers and passengers' faces, so the interior is not really claustrophobic. This basic motor is pretty decent, but you have to shift very often. The gearbox. The gearbox seems to be a German-made gearbox. The they started German made in 2006. The throws of the shift are large, but the shifter is very precise. So gear selection is made with no doubt to go to the right gear you want to select. This feeling of car control is really great. The maximum torque of this motor is at 3,000 revs. So, you have to keep it between 2 and 3 for normal drive and at about 3000 to get a dynamic drive. The brakes. They are really comprehensive. There is no problem understanding how to slow down the vehicle. Even though this car is an old one. There are great landscapes here in Montenegro. About the suspension, it's rather stiff, also you have to consider there are 17 inches wheels installed on this car. But the suspension seems to absorb well the potholes and speed bumps, and it's like having two stages. The first one for handling and the second one for rod but hopes absorbing. So the shocks are not felt at all. But the main feature of Mini is its agility. You only have to slightly move the steering wheel to make the car go in the direction you want it to go. It's possible thanks to multi-beam rear suspension and four wheels at body corners.
Well, this car is a holiday car, or a kind of weekend car. Compared with today plug-in hybrid cars and CarPlay equipped interiors, this car seems to be very honest and very natural, with an alloy of dials and manual transmission. Some people in their reviews says the first series Mini will quickly become collectible cars. It's true, especially for first-generation John Cooper Works models. In first generation, Mini sold about 200,000 cars per year. But it will be harder and harder to find cars in good shape in about five years. Today it's funny to say that the Mini brand was renewed by BMW almost 20 years ago and first Mini hatches were sold in July 2001. This car seems to be out of the timeline. When you drive a used Mini like this, today it's hard to say if this car belongs to the 60s, to the 90s or to the years 2000. This car is rather rare and funny and this gives you a great holiday mood.